Sir James Paget in 1874 described a scaly, itchy erythematous lesion of the nipple and areola resembling eczema and psoriasis associated with underlying breast carcinoma. This condition is now referred to as Paget's disease. And 1-2% to of cases of breast carcinoma present with Paget's disease. The average age of presentation is just under 63 years old and this is 5-10 to 10 years older than other presentations of breast carcinoma. This is a good example of advanced Paget's disease of the breast. There is an erythematous scaly area extending from the nipple into the surrounding areola and also into the surrounding skin. So what is Paget's disease? It is extension of breast cancer cells or Paget cells into the ducts and skin of the nipple and areola. There is underlying ductal carcinoma in situ or infiltrating carcinoma in over 90% of cases and in 50 to 60% of patients with Paget's disease of the nipple there will be a palpable underlying mass and 90% of patients with a palpable mass will have invasive carcinoma. This is the histological appearance of Paget's disease of the breast. The dermis shows a non-specific chronic inflammatory infiltrate composed predominantly of lymphocytes. But as we move up towards the epidermis you can see a population of cytologically malignant cells with large nuclei and abundant pale pink staining cytoplasm and these are Paget cells. Paget's disease of the breast may be diagnosed cytologically using the exudate from the affected area but the best way of making a diagnosis is with a nipple biopsy. Here one can see a shotgun type infiltration pattern of the Paget cells into the epidermis. The cells are large with abundant cytoplasm and they are cytologically malignant. The underlying cancer is almost always poorly differentiated and the Paget cells are HER2 positive in over 90% of cases. The two most useful immunostains for diagnosing Paget's disease are CK7 where the Paget cells are CK7 positive and HER2 where the Paget cells will be HER2 positive in over 90% of cases. Here is a nipple biopsy, this time accompanied by the immunohistochemistry. As we move to higher magnifications, you can clearly see the cytologically malignant Paget cells in the epidermis extending from the basal layer up through the superficial layers. Here is the CK7 stain of this biopsy and you can see that the Paget cells show strong positive staining for CK7. Here is the HER2 stain and you can see that the Paget cells show strong positive staining for HER2. The three main histological Differential diagnoses of Paget's disease of the breast are Pagetoid bones disease, here the cells will be CK7 negative, malignant melanoma where the cytokeratin stains will be negative and melanoma markers positive, and TOCA cells, here the CK7 will be positive but HER2 negative. The cells that can be confused with Paget cells are TOCA cells, these may be present as single cells or aggregates in the epidermis of the nipple, usually in the basal aspect, but they can extend more superficially. They are duct epithelial cells and they are smaller than Paget cells but larger than squamous cells. And because they are derived from ductal epithelial cells, they show positive staining for CK7, just like Paget cells. They can be distinguished from Paget cells because 
they are cytologically bland, i.e. benign, and HER2 is negative. This nipple biopsy shows the presence of multiple cells with abundant pale staining cytoplasm in the epidermis and these are TOCA cells. By way of comparison this is a biopsy of Paget's disease and you can see that the Paget cells are much larger, they are cytologically malignant with pleomorphic nuclei and abundant pale pink staining cytoplasm. Back to TOCA cells and this is the CK7 showing strong positive staining of the TOCA cells that you can see are situated in the basal aspect of the epidermis. This is the HER2 stain and you can see that the TOCA cells failed to stain for HER2. And in contrast, this is a biopsy of Paget's disease showing strong positive staining of the Paget cells for HER2. Yeah.